<laughs> All right. Good morning, Philadelphia. I'm Lester Williams. And I'm Brian Holt. In preparation for the Super Bowl, Eagles fans are already stocked up on batteries for throwing. And later in the hour, 10 tips to make your Valentine's Day valentastic. But first, as you know, it's February 2nd, which means it's Groundhog Day. I believe you mean Groundhog's Day. No, I'm quite positive it's Groundhog Day. If that's what you want to believe, that's what you want to believe. I believe it to be a fact. And I believe you are wrong and just don't want to admit it. It's Groundhog Day, not Groundhog's Day. Groundhog's Day implies that it's the Groundhog's Day, and it's not. It doesn't belong to him. Or do you mean for it to be a contraction, as in to say Groundhog is Day? Is it? Is Groundhog Day, Brian? Think before you speak. Why are you only nice to me when we're at home? <laughs> That's right. Groundhog Day, and we here in Puxatawney have a little tradition. One of the oldest, in fact. You might have heard of it. If good old Puxatawney Phil wakes up and sees his shadow, that means six more weeks of winter. So let's keep our fingers crossed, shall we? And it looks like Phil is crawling out of his burrow now. Let's check it out. He appears to be approaching the microphone. <clears throat> Friends, humans, countrymen, lend me your ears. Come ye again to my hallowed wood, seeking certainty for an uncharted future. Shall we remain assaulted by a harsh and unforgiving winter, or will we be welcomed by a warm, wondrous spring? The answer lies in the hands of the gods, yet you regard me as their prophet. I, Philip, who is nothing more than a simple woodland creature no more divine than yourselves. For years, I have humored your helplessness in an attempt to grant you comfort, hoping your kind would someday find solace within each other. So quick are you to dismiss that which you disagree with and make enemies of those you do not understand. Fear be the music of humanity, and still it plays on. Embrace your differences, your curiosities, and the idea that not every mystery can be solved like the foot soldiers of an unrelenting army. Time marches forward. It is a currency that you cannot conserve, so spend it wisely. Do not follow the faults of your elders. We may be burdened by choice, but the only decision we have to make is... Ah, oh, shit! Well, there you have it, folks. Bill saw his shadow. Looks like it's six more weeks of winter. Right, Brian? I still haven't forgiven you for what you said earlier, and I have decided to no longer speak to you. Could not have said it better myself. So be sure to bundle up and keep those shorts in the closet just a little while longer. Now, over to Chuck with sports. Welcome to The Last Minute, I'm Dustin Wong. First, allow me to address two events that occurred in February. First, being the train derailment and explosion in East Palestine, Ohio, which has made living conditions dangerous for both the community and wildlife. And also, the mass shooting at Michigan State University. Unfortunately, we've reached a point in our society where conservatives would rather kids get shot than learn about slavery. Our thoughts go out to the victims and families of these tragedies. But now, the fake news. A robot program to identify humans has been developed by the Pentagon. However, U.S. Marines were able to evade the robot by hiding under a cardboard box. It's not the most comforting thought when your government scientists are thwarted by a Metal Gear tactic. Senator Bernie Sanders is calling for a minimum salary of $60,000 for public school teachers but only on the condition that they live at the school. In Massachusetts, a new bill has been proposed that would give prisoners an early release if they donate organs, which would be ironic for those in jail 
for stealing organs. I guess it's a take a kidney, leave a kidney type of thing. Tennessee Republicans voted to criminalize drag shows. For people obsessed with the Second Amendment, they seem to forget about the one right before it. They want to make felonies out of drag shows, but have no problem with child beauty pageants? Actually, I'm not that surprised, as Republicans in Wyoming are speaking out against a bill that would prohibit marriages for children 15 years old or younger, really emphasizing the groom in groomers. And speaking of people who creep me out, the Supreme Court admitted that they weren't the best choice to decide the future of the internet. So, let me make sure I got this. People who have a limited understanding of something should not be in charge of that thing? I have to say I agree. And it's not just our government who lacks self-awareness, though. The Chinese government is asking for the return of their totally not a spy balloon that was shot down by the U.S. military. And yeah, good luck getting that back. Why is that? After it was shot down, it landed in Mr. Myrtle's junkyard. The Beast got it. The Beast? Wait, you don't, wait, you don't know The Beast? Ricky, tell him. Tell him, Ricky. The legend of The Beast goes back a long time, Liam. Before any of us could even pick up a baseball. It started about um, 20 years ago when the thieves started to steal from Mr. Myrtle's junkyard. So Mr. Myrtle got his pup from the dog pound. In a few weeks, the pup grew into a beast. And he grew big. And he grew mean. The beast was the most perfect junkyard dog that ever lived. A true killing machine. He killed 120, no, 173 guys. It's true. The beast was too good at his guard dog job, so the police said that he had to be retired. My grandfather, Squidman Hamilton, was police chief back then, and he ordered Mr. Myrtle to chain up the beast. Mr. Myrtle asked him how long he had to keep the beast chained up like a slave. And he said until forever. Forever? Forever. Forever, forever? Forever. Maybe we, <laughs> maybe we wasted time referencing a film that came out 30 years ago. Maybe we were light on jokes this month. Who's to say? In more international news, U.S. food additives have been banned in Europe. Experts say what Americans eat is almost certainly making them sick. And how dare you criticize the land of the nacho fries and home of the KFC Double Down, a sandwich where instead of bread... They use two pieces of fried chicken. I'm actually less concerned if they still sell the Double Down and more concerned that they made it in the first place. The colonel was so preoccupied with whether or not he could, he didn't stop to think if he should. And finally, attorneys for one of shooter Kyle Rittenhouse's victims are alleging that Rittenhouse is purposely avoiding them. And if that's the case, given his history, I would recommend not trying to run him down. And now for something completely different. Okay, but it's not actually real, is it? Uh, we're recording now. I'm just saying if I'm going to have to sit across from it the entire time, then I'm... Like I said, we're all about authenticity on this podcast. Whenever you're ready, Kendra. Fine. It's February again, listeners. Which means it's time to celebrate everyone's favorite holiday. Valentine's Day, but we're going to do it last minute style. That's right. Grab your chocolates, your roses, and your U.S. history textbook from the 90s, because I've got the sexiest man to ever hold executive office on the pod to dish about all the dirty details. Give it up for Mr. William Howard Taft. Should I keep going? Yeah, we'll record his lines after he's a bit shy. Yeah, uh-huh. So, Tafty, I heard you were the political prodigy of Theodore Roosevelt. Tell me, was he as rough of a rider as everyone says he was? Like a bull moose, huh? Damn, I'll bet he could just go for hours. And do you have any mustache grooming tips for our audience, William? Really? I'll bet. I'll bet. Okay, yeah, I, I can't do this. You can and you will. Excuse me? 
Did I say something? Oh, okay. Look, this is all just pop trivia facts about Taft. Don't you think you should talk about the actual facts of his presidency? <laughs> like what? Like how despite the resurgence in progressive policies brought on by the previous Roosevelt presidency, Taft actually fell in line with the more conservative members of the Republican Party, pulling a sizable amount of politicians and voters to the right. He was an ineffectual lame duck of a president who was more concerned with undermining his predecessor than actually serving the American people. I mean, he even forced Roosevelt and progressives out of the party, splitting the Republican vote during the next presidential election and handing the election to noted white supremacist sympathizer and Democrat Woodrow Wilson. I mean, the guy was kind of the linchpin for the reversing of polarity between the parties in the early 20th century. Don't you think that's worth at least mentioning? Not really, no. Uh, Dustin and Ricky were right. You're fucking weird. Please tell me you don't riff on this stupid bathtub myth in this sketch, though. Well, oh, no, no, not that. No, I might be evil, but I'm not fat phobic. Okay, while we're here, the way you write women is just... Oh, uh, sc- Liam, I forgot to mention that stealing my keys to get into the studio still counts as breaking entering, even though you're on staff. Oh, oh, hey, Ken. How's it going? I didn't know you were going to be a part of the studio. Oh, my God! Oh my God, Liam, is that a skeleton? Like an actual skeleton in here? That's what I was asking. Jesus, it smells like, just like death. And the monogram and, Liam, did you exhume the actual real corpse of William Howard Taft for a fucking bit? You said we should be making an effort to make this podcast more authentic, right? Yeah, I, and I meant that in like many other like non-grave robbing ways. I thought that'd be a little more obvious. Hey, 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 where are you going? Liam, I just want to talk and- I just want to get my keys back. And they say romance is dead. So Tennessee is becoming less of a drag and not in a good way. And Kyle Rittenhouse is evading consequences faster than I evade my parents asking me why I don't go to church anymore. But in other news... A nine-year-old boy from Pennsylvania became one of the youngest high school graduates. When asked why, the young man told reporters that his mom would only let him play video games after he did all his homework. A judge in Columbia used ChatGPT to make a court ruling, marking the first time a legal decision was made with the help of artificial intelligence. Unfortunately, the AI kept responding, kill all humans, which I don't know what that has to do with insurance fraud. According to the Pew Research Center, most women in their 20s are in committed relationships, while most men are not. And fucking tell me something I don't know. In unrelated news, a study has found that the average penis length has increased, and that's... unfortunate. Is something someone with a below-average-sized penis would say, which I am not. (laughs) I'm sorry? Correction, which I am. Now, for 20 years, I'm just saying I was doing just fine before this. Were you? No, I wasn't. No, I was not. (laughs) For 20 years. For 20 years, a woman in the UK used fake documents to pose as a doctor. And unfortunately... She was the only one who accepted our insurance. 20 years is incredibly impressive, though. So either she's very good at guessing, or being a doctor might not be that hard. And you know what? There's only one way to find out. Ricky, get on the phone! Already on it. Not everyone is as deceptive, though. In Bolivia, a murderer attempted to escape prison by dressing as a sheep. He was caught and returned to his cell. I guess he... Couldn't pull the wool over their eyes. Liam, I said he couldn't put the wool over their eyes. I don't... What is... Liam, I said he couldn't pull the wool over their eyes. I don't understand. I don't know if you know this, Liam, but sheep have wool. Major headlines in the tech world as YouTube Susan Wojcicki announced that she will be unsubscribing. I mean, stepping down as CEO. She also announced that she has smashed that like button and turned on notifications for future opportunities. Mars Wrigley, the company that produces candies such as Snickers and Twix, was fined after workers fell into a vat of chocolate. Investigations are underway after another worker turned into a giant blueberry. 
In the world of entertainment, a source claims that Leonardo DiCaprio is unhappy with his reputation for dating much younger women. Well, if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, maybe he's just a duck who likes them young. But not like a Wyoming way. Or at least I hope not. Tom Brady announced his retirement from the NFL one year after he retired from the NFL. Tom Brady retiring is like McDonald's discontinuing the McRib. You know what? I'm going to believe it when I see it. And speaking of food, the Wall Street Journal recommends that to save money, maybe you should skip breakfast. You'd actually be surprised how much money I've saved by not eating breakfast. It works so well, in fact, I've also started skipping lunch and dinner. Now I've lost a ton of weight, and I'm never lonely because I'm always followed by vultures. And finally, according to data from Country Health Rankings, Wisconsin is the drunkest state in America again. But not for long, Ricky, beer me! We'll be right back after a message from our sponsors. This episode of The Last Minute is brought to you by Valentine's Day on a Tuesday. Great timing. Now no one's happy. Also by AI-generated porn. Because naked women were just impossible to find on the internet before. And finally, the druids who live in the woods behind my home. Have a goat you don't want anymore? Give them a shout. They'll find you. All right, that's the way it is, folks. But remember, always put your best foot forward. If you only have one foot, then you're halfway there. Have a great day and a better tomorrow. The Last Minute with Dustin Wong, a 20-something studios production. Hosted by me, Dustin Wong. Featuring LP Foley, Kendra Garnett, Ricky Hamilton, and Ryan Phelps. Written by Dustin Wong, LP Foley, and Ricky Hamilton. Cover art by Joey Bashan. And a special thanks to Axum Creative. Rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts and contact the show by emailing thelastminute.dw at gmail.com.